Hey, shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome back. I thank you again for joining me today. Uh, today, I just want to talk about uh, something I just discovered online. I was just browsing around and everything, and uh, I didn't realize, and I think I should mention about uh, the, the well, a discovery of uh, alleged discovery of the Apostle Peter's tomb, and that's happened around like 1960s. And uh, there's a little booklet on online that could be bought. It's under it's under a uh, hundred pages long, of course, and details uh, an investigation into the alleged uh, tomb of you know Saint Peter. But uh, Peter's it's, you know the book is called Peter's Tomb, recently discovered in in Jerusalem. Uh, I've never so like I said I've never heard this before. I don't have the whole booklet or anything. I just have. Uh, X, X, you know, little parts of it, a couple pages worth, and I just want to read it to you. I just thought it was noteworthy to bring it up and let you guys be the judge. Uh, I'm going to read these a few pages and let you, you know, and after that, you know, you can comment below and let me know what you think about it, if you've ever heard of this or whatever. But uh, this is uh, from the personal account by F. Paul Peterson. Um, he states, and it, oh, excuse me for, and please excuse me for uh, if I miss, you know, mispronounce a name or you know, you know, get a certain name wrong because if, even if it's like a foreign name from an Arab or something like that, you know, I mean, please excuse me. I'll do the best I can. Uh, while visiting a friend in Switzerland, I heard of what seemed to me one of the greatest discoveries since the time of of Yeshua, or Christ. That Peter was buried in Jerusalem and not in Rome. The source of this rumor written in Italian was not clear. It left considerable room for doubt, or rather wonder. Rome was the place where I could investigate the matter. And if such proved encouraging, a trip to Jerusalem might be necessary in order to gather valuable first-hand information on the subject. Uh, I therefore went to Rome after... Talking to many priests and investigating various sources of information, I finally was greatly rewarded by learning where I could buy the only known book on the subject, which was also written in Italian. It is called, uh, it's a uh, Glees Scavi del Dominius Flevet, printed in 1958 at the uh, Typographia del PP. Uh, Francinia, Francinia in Jerusalem. It was written by it was written by P. B. Baghetti and J. T. Malik, both Roman Catholic priests. The story of the discovery was there, but it seemed to be purposely hidden for much was lacking. I consequently determined to go to Jerusalem to see for myself, if possible, that which appeared to be almost unbelievable, especially since it came from priests who naturally, because of the existing tradition that Peter was buried in Rome, would be the last ones to welcome such a discovery or bring it to the attention of the world. In Jerusalem, I spoke to many Franciscan priests who all said finally, though reluctantly, that the bones of Simon Barjona were found in Jerusalem on the Franciscan monastery site called Dominius Flevet, where Yeshua was supposed Supposed to have wept over Jerusalem on the Mount of Olives, where the names of Christian biblical characters were found on the ossuaries or bone boxes. The names of Mary and Martha were found on one box, and right next to it was one with the name of Lazarus, their brother. Other names, or other names of early Christians, were found on other boxes. Of greatest interest, however, there was that which was found within 12 feet from the place where the remains of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were found, the remains of uh, Peter. They were found in an ossuary on the outside of which was clearly and beautifully written in Aramaic, Simon Barjona. The story of the cave and the ossuaries in the regular cemetery just outside of the convent site is this. It was a Roman custom that when a person had died and after about 10 years, when the body was decomposed, the grave would be opened. The bones would be placed in a small ossuary with the name of the person carefully written on the outside front. 
These ossuaries would then be placed in a cave as in the case of this Christian burial ground and thus making room for others. But this cave or burial place where the ossuaries were found and which were created and then brought about through the natural and disinterested uh, sequence of events without any reason to change facts or circumstances was a great testimony than if there were a witness recorded stating that Peter was buried there. And yet even that is unmistak unmistakably recorded in the three words in Aramaic on the ossuary, Simon bar Jonah. When Pope Pius XII declared the Assumption of Mary to be an article of faith in 1950, the Catholic Church in Jerusalem then quickly sold the tomb of Mary to the Armenian Church. Ex-priest Lavallo told me personally that there is another tomb of St. Mary in uh, Ephesus, but the tomb of St. Peter was altogether different, for they would rather that it never existed, and to buy or sell such a site would be out of the question. It fell upon them in this manner, as I was told by a Franciscan monk of the monastery of Dominius uh, Flevet, one of their members was uh, spading the ground on the site in 1953 when his shovel fell through. Evacua ev excavation was started and there a large underground Christian burial ground was uncovered. The initial of uh, Christ in Greek was written there with... Uh, which would never have been found in a Jewish, Arab, or pagan cemetery. But the structure of the writings, it is, was established by scientists that they were of the days of just before the destruction of Jerusalem by Titus in 70 AD. You can see then how the Christians would be inclined to have their burial ground on the mount, for here also has been a favorite meeting place of, of Yeshua and his disciples. In all the cemetery, nothing was found, also, and as also in the catacombs of Rome, which resembles Arab, Jewish, Catholic, or pagan practices. The pagan churches, uh, the Catholic Church, says that Peter was pope in Rome from 41 to 66 A.D., a period of 25 years. But the Bible shows a different story. The Book of Acts of the Apostles, in either the Catholic or Protestant Bible, records the following. Peter was preaching the gospel to the circumcision, the Jews, uh, in Caesarea and Joppa and the Palestine, ministering unto the household of Cornelius, which is a distance of 1,800 miles from Rome. And they can find that in Acts chapter 10, verse 23 and 24. Soon after, about the year 44 AD, Acts 12, Peter was cast into prison in Jerusalem by Herod, but he was released by an angel. Apparently, Peter left Jerusalem and went to Babylon. Peter was not is not mentioned again until the Jerusalem Conference of 49 A.D., and that's in Acts chapter 15, verse uh, 7. Saul was converted in 33 A.D. and became Paul the Apostle, Acts 9. Paul tells us that three years after his conversion in 36 A.D., he went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, Galatians chapter 1, verse 18. And in 49 A.D., 14 years later, he went up to Jerusalem, uh, Galatians chapter 2, verses 1 and 8. Peter being mentioned soon after that he met Peter, he met Peter in Antioch, and as Paul says, he withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. Galatians chapter 2, verse 11. The evidence is abundant. The truth is clear from the scriptures. Very few, if any, have withstood a pope and lived, except in those these days when everybody seems to withstand him. If Peter were pope, it would have been no different. Paul does not only withstand Peter, but he rebukes him and blames him of being at fault. And that, of course, you know who would who would who would you know stand up to a pope? You know, I mean, especially back in the days after the apostles. You know. The ancient Christian burial ground shows that Peter died and was buried in Jerusalem, which is easily understandable since neither history nor the Bible tells of Peter's ha Peter having been in Rome. To make matters more clear, the Bible tells us Peter was an apostle to the Jews. It was Paul who was the apostle to the Gentiles in both history and the Bible tells of his of his being in Rome. No wonder that the Roman Catholic bishop, uh, 
Strassenayer in his uh, great speech against papal infallibility before the Pope and the Council in 1870 stated, uh, Scaliger, one of the most learned men, has not hesitated to say that St. Peter's uh, residence in Rome ought to be classed with the ridiculous legends. Eusebius, one of the most learned men of his time, wrote the church history up until the year 325 AD. He said that Peter never was in Rome. Mark you, all the priests agree that the Vatican and St. Peter were built over the pagan cemetery. You realize surely that Christians would never bury their dead in a pagan cemetery, and you may be very sure that pagans would never allow a Christian to be buried in their cemetery. So even if Peter died in Rome, which is out of the question, surely the pagan cemetery under St. Peter's Basilica would be the last place in which he would have been buried. But they have said that after all these years of excavating under the Vatican, they have discovered Greek words which read, Peter is buried here. And it gives a date, 160 AD. First of all, the very structure of the sentence immediately gives one the impression that either quite recently or long ago, someone put the sign there, hoping it would be uh, taken as authentic in order to establish that which then and even now has been proven. Then there is a discrepancy in the date. For Peter was martyred around the year 62 AD and not 160 AD. Thirdly, why is it that they mention nothing about finding bones under or around the sign? While visiting the catacombs, one sees a few things which are not becoming a Christian, Christians, but which tend to indicate that the Christians had some pagan practices similar to those of Rome today. Nothing is said about them, and only about persistent questions will the Roman Catholic priest who acts as guide tell you that those things, images, whatever, replaced their centuries after the early Christian era. 1950, just a few years prior to the discovery of the Christian burial ground in Jerusalem, the Pope made a strange declaration that the bones of St. Peter were found under uh, St. Peter's in Rome. Strange as strange it was for since beginning since beginning to build the church in 1450, finished in uh, 1626, they erected St. Peter's tomb under a large dome and uh, Brandini serpentine uh, columns. Since then, multiplied millions were or yeah, multiplied millions were thereby deceived into believing that the remains of St. Peter's were there, which the hierarchy had all along known was not true. As it is proven by the late Pope's declaration, the following was published in Newsweek on July 1st, 1957. It was in 1950 that Pope Pius XII, in his Christmas message, announced that the tomb of St. Peter had indeed been found, as tradition held, beneath the immense dome of the cathedral. There was, however, no evidence that the bones uncovered there belonged to the body of the martyr. To make an announcement of such importance, when there is absolutely, absolutely no evidence, is rather ridiculous, as was also brought out of Time magazine on October 28, 1957. A thorough account in English of the discoveries beneath St. Peter's was not available. By British archaeologists Jocelyn uh, Toynaby and John Ward Perkins. The authors were not members of the excavating team, but scholars Toynaby, a Roman Catholic, and Perkins, an Angelican, poured over the official Vatican reports painstakingly and examined the diggings. Their careful independent conclusions fell short of the Pope's flat statement. The Pope's statement that the remains of St. Peter's were found under St. Peter's in Rome, the, evacu the excavations under St. Peter's for the remains of St. Peter was still, on go was still going on secretly in spite of the Pope's declaration 1950. Then in 1965, an archaeologist of Rome University, Professor Margarita Garducci, tells of a new set of bones belonging to Peter. The story was fantastic, but lacked common sense and even bordered on the, you know, insane. The, Pal the Palo Alto Times in California, May 9th, 1967, 
came out with an article on the subject, and I quote, other ex experts among them, Monsignor Joseph Rush, uh, Rushatchet, 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 Vice Prefect of the Roman Library, the Vatican Library, are not convinced by Miss Carducci's evidence. There is too many unknowns, he told reporters on the recent tour of the Vatican grottoes. There is no continuous tracing of the bones. We lack historical proof. They could be anyone's bones. The Vatican would seem to be on the Monsignor side because so far it has taken no steps to officially recognize the bones as St. Peter's, continues the article. In spite of the statements by the high papal authority ab above and the result resilient lessons, that should have been learned. The Pope, a year later, claimed that Professor Margarita bones, Margarita bones of those of St. Peter. When the bones were found, there was little importance placed upon them, and they were filed away as such. But when the first set of Peter's bones turned out so tragically, there was a vacuum left, and something had to be done. Again, they turned to their to their thoughts. To the filed away bones, the only hope they had of success in them, there was a ray of hope for the bones were minus a skull, which could go along with the story of the supposed skull of St. Peter, which was had for centuries been guarded in the church of St. John Lateran in Rome. With a, with a generous mixture of ideas, supposions, uh, the, uh, theories, and uh, wishful thinking, a fairly logical story emerged. It was then declared by Pope Paul as a gospel truth that these now were the genuine bones of St. Peter, and most of the faithful accepted them as such. For a while, all was well until another hitch developed. The time, the time as fate would have it, the bones in connection with the skull, which was guarded for centuries as that of St. Peter was found incompatible, to the more recent bones of St. Peter. The dilemma was terrible. It was a choice of claiming these bones championed by Professor Margarita as fake, or claiming as fake the skull accepted by hundreds of popes as that of St. Peter. They rejected the past rather than expose themselves for the ridicule of the present. Professor Margarita claims in this article, which appears in the Manchester Guardian in London, as well as the San Francisco Chronicle in June 9, uh, 27, 1968, concerning the long-accepted skull of St. Peter as it was a fake. Then the article continues, the hundreds of popes and millions of Roman Catholics who accepted the venerated the other skull were uh, innocent victims of another early tradition. But the most astounding statement and the long article found in the above-mentioned newspaper was the professor did not submit them to modern scientific tests, which would have determined the approximate age because she feared the process would have reduced them to dust. How could any scientific study of bones be carried out without first scientifically determining the age of a person or bones? This would be of the greatest interest and the most important for further research. Also, any scientist or chemist knows that if you do not have it to submit to the whole skeleton for testing to determine the age, a part of the shin bone or the rib could be sufficient. It appears that she was protecting her Peter's bones from another possible disaster which a wrong age would have caused. The Vatican and others have calculated through all existing evidence that Peter lived to be around 80 to 82 years of age, and he died around the year 62 to 64 AD. These figures go go along perfect perfectly because, well, as does everything else in the case, which remains found in the Christian burial ground on the Mount of Olives and in the ossuary on which it was clearly and beautifully written, signed by Jonah in Aramaic. The great historian Shaf, Shaf states that the, that the idea of Peter being in Rome was was uh, irreconcilable uh, with the silence of the scriptures, and even with the mere fact that Paul Paul's epistle to the Romans. In the year 57, Paul wrote his epistle to the Roman church 
but does not mention Peter, although he does name 28 leaders in the church at Rome, which is in Romans uh, chapter 16, verse 7. It must therefore be concluded that if the whole subject is faced with detached objectivity, the conclusion must inevitably be reached that Peter was never in Rome. Paul lived and wrote in Rome, but he declared only Luke was with me. And uh, that's just uh, parts of the book that uh, that I had right here. I don't have the whole booklet or anything, but, you know, I encourage you guys to, you know, if you guys are interested, and, I'm, you know, I'm either way, you know, I mean, when it comes to, you know, first, when it comes to the Catholics claiming that, you know, Peter was in Rome and he's buried under, you know, the Vatican, things like that. I really don't believe that because, you know, Peter himself said he was in Babylon and some scholars say Babylon means Rome, you know, and that's not the case. Peter wouldn't, I don't believe Peter would try to mislead somebody or label something a different way. And, um, you know, there was, this uh, discovery was brushed under the rug, you know, and, uh, you know, it should have did scientific tests. And today's test, you know, could have been DNA, could have been all sorts of things, you know. I mean, they could have told, you know, probably where where he lived, not just his age, where he lived, what he looked like, you know, what kind of, maybe what kind of race he was, you know. And uh, anyways, let me know what you think about this. I just thought it was interesting to bring it up, you know, and, uh, you know, all this stuff's coming up, you know, all these relics about, you know, the apostles, you know, finger over here, skull over here, you know, some of the skeleton in this place, you know, um, uh, it's hard to believe for me, you know, but uh, anyways, just let me know what you think. Thank you again for joining me and give me a big thumbs up and hit that notification bell and, and subscribe, you know, I appreciate that very much. Until we meet again, thank you and peace out and shalom.